Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Meghan and Harry unleashed a series of family allegations against King Charles, accusing him of being unfaithful to his wife, having an argument with William. Beneath the once august facade, a whirlpool of speculation over Prince Harry's life has been bubbling on newspaper pages. Speculation has raged for almost a year, fueled by gossip in the nearby town of Tetbury and rumors about an isolated Georgian manor house that they spent months searching for before deciding to buy. Which of course will have the picturing what and how that enigmatic lifestyle a renegade prince led entailed fans going. Find, Prince Harry eyes up a Georgian style in residence Gloucestershire next to the father, King Charles's beloved Highgrove estate. He is thought to have been hoping for a UK base since June, but has encountered barriers. Celebrity royal biographer Tom Quinn claims Harry is trapped in UK, regards Frogmore Cottage as prison because he shares philandering father's fear of being secluded from public life by July 3, Daily Mail, Spare. For Harry, who is accustomed to living in fortressed private residences, Frogmore offered an unusual level of seclusion and security. Harry had illusions of being able to keep his toe in the royal water with all its attendant trappings after he walked away from the firm, as Quinn says pointedly elsewhere in her piece. While it is extremely hard to imagine ever reaching such moments, Quinn explains Harry getting closer to his father would have a knock-on effect with the Duke of Sussex's children Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet develop their own relationships with cousins, but most importantly, a grandfather. That would fit King Charles spending more time visiting his grandchildren in the US didn't see much of them over the past few months, photo in Sandringham this January, thus what commenced as Harry seeking out a new residence swiftly devolves into an allegorical raid on remoteness and the bond of family blood. The truth over here is a really bitter allegation but contrary to the common gossip. Apparently, Prince Harry had no plans on King Charles mending what was broken. While there are already so many stories floating around Vanderpump rules about what really happens in their relationship King Charles has no intention of flying over to America and seeing his grandchildren. Rather, the king has only strengthened his hard and fast stance after it was suggested that he would have the opportunity to if Harry releases his memoir spare. Not only has the book shook the royal family, it seems to have also just pushed father and son further apart because reconciliation now looks more unattainable than ever. Well, that certainly clears up the likelihood of a reconciliation behind closed doors for those who believe it would ever really come and want desperately to see King Charles bond with Prince Harry. The gracelessness and frostiness of the monarch drove their story into a jaw-dropping twist, could they ever make amends, or was this the last chapter in an acrimonious father-son relationship? So Mr. Quinn re-emerges, a busy bee buzzing away, such tales are simply absurd. But Markle would never pick a rural home most of all, she hates country activities. If we do move then Mrs. says she wants to live in Kensington and as much I am trying save some cash the construction industry is just not good enough at present, alas this looks an unlikely outcome they should have thought about opening a London office before rushing to leave and I for one cannot see her agreeing to let Harry flit back and forth across the pond with all their children. He sang more like a child, a rather good thing, fishing for sympathy without being too desperate over here by the way he posted which suggests that this is quite extreme if she will go to those lengths just because of him. The tiny ones will remain under her watchful gaze. This is utter rubbish of a story. She will, no doubt insist on nothing less than a stately home with space for Scobie and the snappers to stay plus somewhere he can billet his security team. If there is any truth to those rumors, he will surely challenge the king. Megan can almost be heard to say, right, so if we can't get that house we better find something nearby. Too close for comfort, you might say. This person is a constant freeloader that never seems to be grateful despite all the help he has received. It reads like a calculated attempt on the part of Harry to worm his way back into the firm. However, Meghan will never be accepted by either the royal family or British public. They have to disassociate from any royal connotations. Nothing but a PR exercise. 
Are we dodging bullets before they start coming or are paying the damage control in anticipation of a Trump being ensconced there? The states can keep him he and his wife are not welcome here. Forcibly included in all this is King Charles, never to be upset again with another Kent heir or his trusted interlopers constantly making demands on Meghan's behalf. He needs rest and tranquility in his recovery. Camilla, working hard as one of the king's servants, needs these two scrapping for leftovers on her doorstep. Not one report, nor picture of him looking at properties outside the city. Ah, another able-bodied idiot. Maybe Harry expects Daddy to buy it for him. How would the public respond to him reaching out and trying rebuild relationships with his family who he disrespected, as well as a nation that turned on their screens so they could gather around them? This is an extremely unlikely scenario. Also how long will his wife let him stay at the second home free and clear? In this, Harry stands alone. If William is unlikely to speak with his brother again the pair was once so close that Charles even asked him whether he should go through with marrying Diana, according to some reports, and Catherine's sister Pippa has been seen publicly sporting an anti-Megan mask reading Megxit, reconciliation between Harry and those above him looks almost as thorny as healing wounds beneath. And the Wales kids probably won't form a bond with the Sussex brood either. Prince George and Princess Charlotte also are much older than Prince Louis, Steve tells us it would be some time before they would subtly influence him. Not so for Harry and Meghan, outsiders then remain but the rest of Wales' children have a royal obligations in their future. While William and Catherine are keen to protect their privacy and security, with one well-placed source saying they will be wary of doing anything that might involve Harry and Meghan as long as they were partnered with Netflix since the Sussexes have a deal there to make content in return for money. Sources close to the Sussexes claimed that King is now willing to spend more time with his children. Although the Sussexes will be left to refind their way in life through the prism of parenthood, with normal circumstances, meaning that Meghan is unlikely to set up casual meetings for her children with royal relatives they do not know. There was always an angle of money in it for Harry and Meghan. Their lavish lifestyle as well as a decision to step away from royal duties is likely why Harry and Meghan turned to Charles for support, according OT insiders. They now realize how much they gave up be not being working royals. Harry is criticized for trying to be a homebody in the UK, as he fights his fortune dwindling down, potentially restricting any future decisions. This behavior is not consistent with the norms established within the British royal family, however. There has also been speculation that Harry is doing it all to upset the king, following in a tradition of his grandparents. He might be taken as the joking, but probably there is something looks fishy in his plans and intentions. Nobody is going to come visit them, and of course they want to stay close. Should the king die, they would prefer to be nearby. For the love of green, that is all. I mean, obviously if Kate popped her clogs Megs wouldn't think twice before having a crack at nabbing Will. Won't Henry just be Americanized already? The truth is, Meghan hated Frogmore. Unhappy because she was not a queen, she moved to California, taking Harry with her and further feeding their victim mentality. He would do what security? He will nonetheless never be an IPP, no matter how prolifically he sues the UK. Oh, daddy may be paying his security bills in the UK, but here he's going to have to pay for himself? He presumably has security costs of at least 3 million per year, a number that makes it impossible for them to earn their way out. White the Prophet V2 was an exaggeration of profits on his former book and now he is rumored to be working on a follow-up, this time which will not make the profit claims, spare two? Both he and Uncle Andrew are battling the same demons. Dwindling ratings have made it increasingly impossible for them to keep living the way they do. Harry is out in the cold with his moany missus and fading fortunes, even Fergie can't save Andrew. He thought his father and brother had been stuck but here he is exercising inherited ones. This seems like a fruitless waste of time hunting for houses that Harry may yearn for his Eton and army comrades there is no doubt, many of them do not come to see him because they cannot abide Meghan tells you a lot. The couple's powerful connection to each other evaporates the carefully cultivated band of brothers, 
as Megan assertively influences Harry in a way that is alien to his old mates. While it fits with Megan's pledge of never coming back to the UK, economically retaining a property they barely use seems unfeasible. Eventually, as their funding runs out and the costs of keeping a UK home begin to wear them down. Suddenly, the thought of house hunting seems faintly ludicrous Maud would never agree to it. Charles likely wants the National Bank of Charles to pay for it which is highly unlikely. Charles has to be careful about extending himself further since the price tag Andrew comes with is already a heavy burden. And he has to think whether trying to walk out of the fray with some measure of his dignity still intact is going to make this already impossible setup into one that's unmanageable on a here and now basis for families strained circumstances. But on our patch, Harry will have views that he is rather less important while having to enjoy round-the-clock armed protection and private jets as him and his family return to the UK. Taking the children to a country that may expose them to danger is also not in their best interest they are safer in California as crimes associated with collecting high debts such as kidnapping and murder for hire are rare. Security and effects on the airport while Harry had visions of him surrounded by blacked-out SUVs with its armed occupants at every intersection, that would not be possible in our case. Plus, Megan is said to be unwilling for their children to live in the UK full-time. Closer to home, the Isle of Mull offers some of Scotland's most secluded properties if you can bear all that wind and rain. After all, Harry not only left royal duties but also told private words to his relatives and betrayed the family as a whole through them, dishonoring grandmother's reputation in front of interviewers. Wishful thinking that Tom Quinn's idea of empathy or going public with Harry's property hunt will somehow garner sympathy. And it is on this note that he has to reconnect with his family somewhat reconciling the future king before they can let their children play together. Harry never will get his brother's trust again completely, but the fact that William is quick to ascend could be something Harry is wary of and would have an impact on what he did before. There are reports that Biden and not Trump, who's obviously headed for a second term, whoops, might protect the Sussexes under his administration. Harry is starting to learn that he gave up a lot for independent living. Grass is not always greener on the other side. Karma got him good when he stepped into the sixth century. Ultimately, the effects of karma shall come about. In the end, God will not bless these wicked people doing evil to others. Be mindful of this. The monarchy has successfully carried on without the two misfit rogues. The children will certainly not be staying with her if he does buy somewhere in the UK. If Harry's cousins somehow do visit a vast process, they could stay far away and now not allow their kids for use in any future publications and option Megan said she weren't supplied. Even if they claim the opposite, even if they draw attention outside of their scandal by surreptitiously taping private chats for monetary gain, an insidious act that would effectively ostracize anyone involved, Regaining trust will be a slow process. Mainstream media outlets reported that the late Queen had not met Lilibet or even seen her virtually. Several national newspapers, including the Daily Express, have reported this within the last couple of hours. The palace had been working on addressing the long standing issues Harry and Meghan spoke about, despite what was implied by Harry in his CBS interview. The headline Her Majesty says they cannot be reckless because it would tar the royals and the country as well. The lies that flow as naturally from their mouths and thus obtained information about their faith personalities. The couple in question and their expected future children so long as they disavow all titles. Perhaps this is the palace starting to identify there are no children, or even if they do exist in some form that it isn't as presented publicly? How heartless to share a dodgy photo of the little girl in blue on what would have been Lilibet's third birthday and say it was from her first. Harry is an outright traitor to his son, brother, grandson and society by lying so shamelessly within his own family as well as the public. Even in his grandmother's sickness, he could not prevent causing pain. I hope the truth will come out soon and be taken into action as it deserves. Charles loves his son, but it is time for the truth. Enough with the lies, Harry should face his punishment. Which is what he deserves he deserves it at least as his minimum punishment actions. 
As well, the outcome in my view is solely at her own fingertips. But she could be spending a bundle for PR that's not working. The king must pull himself together and informally address the Californian kids who are just one air crash away from the throne. Just the comment of Meghan made it obvious to everyone what her true intentions are. Strangely, a child model from an internet shopping catalog would seem to have been pretending for years that she was the princess in Los Angeles. Lilibet visiting Queen Elizabeth II was false from beginning to end Harry brazenly lied about it. Although it should be a relief now that Harry has finally admitted to his deception, but moving on might not be easy. Whilst Harry is confirming the births of their children, others could prove to be other lies in time. I think the palace is being deliberate in pages out information slowly about Harry and Meghan, maybe as part of a strategy. What they hear from us matters not, and like a dead dodo only respond to the sound of their own shrill voices. Instead of royal tour, it sounds more like just a plain old trip to Nigeria to give you an idea the king and he POW were reported to be incandescent with rage. The death of the king may have precipitated a rush to get some especially dirty laundry into play as we see Harry, Meghan, and anyone who does not want them in their country being blamed by palace insiders already poised for distance from any newsman looking forward Sussex way, yet more Nigerian exhibitions soon come Monday. The Nigeria trouble could cause a storm across the Commonwealth of Nations with regards to dissatisfaction from the palace. Regrettably, Ghana has made their invitation public, they will reportedly face backlash for it, but Harry and Meghan are set to wear the brunt of that. It looks like Scobie and Marcus are going to have their work cut out for them. I for one cannot wait to see if the palace releases a statement on Archie and his photoshopped christening pics. No member of the royal family was said to have seen Archie until during a visit in South Africa. Meghan was asked to come by the Queen numerous times, but she refused. The attitude was just rude. In fact, the child she had with her when meeting Desmond Tutu was not even hers. It was claimed the observers pointed out how one-year-old Archie looked uncomfortable on his mother's lap as they got settled in to life back America. Have you seen in the video where Harry says Dada Pam looked? No matter that Harry was widely assumed to be the father, Meghan gave him a wry glare, as only we could see. However, it was easy to dismiss this as another symptom of her narcissism that the child she wanted would be hers and no one else's. For years on, she could have appeared bitter at the time because of her belief that Harry was not the child's father. She is not the mother to that child. It is very sad that the late queen permitted this deception to start. It ended with the Winfrey interview and it never should have gone as far, she added. It is doubtful that the children were really hers, so what possessed her to let them be included in accession line? She should have also started the ball rolling on their titles being removed. She treated him unjustly in leaving Charles to cope with it. This was the third time Nigeria had been involved, an obvious contravention of the Sandringham Agreement. Meghan was every day seeking to break the bank off their royal titles, apart from none of her money-making schemes ever took place. All of them died quickly, and the question will arise about stopping or pursuing legal avenues. Not one of us saw it as a failure that, for some inexplicable reason, she had not been able to make her mark in the annals of royal influence, we just accepted what Princess Michael has always referred to with refreshing English nomenclature as the situation. From that point forward, Harry and Meghan rather directed their concentration toward the nature of turning into global royals with a more extended vision being about top Commonwealth representatives. It was their third Commonwealth reception, having first exchanged pleasantries with Canadian indigenous leaders and then greeting dignitaries from Jamaica. Despite attempts by the British to secretly rechannel them, they managed to keep meeting Nigerian officials who seemed reluctant. Ignoring admonitions, they hurled themselves at fresh schemes. In a well-known American saying, three strikes and you're out. The palace might have taken time to address the deception in efforts of giving the young couple some space and room to fix their relationship, however it does not appear that they ever untangled themselves. They were fierce and unremitting enemies of the royal house, if not to monarchy. The palace is just suggesting to the dissatisfied, without actually showing them a red flag, 
it is merely signaling to Meghan and Harry that their behavior is no longer welcome. Despite the war, they formed links with monarchical opponents. Britons are now demanding answers after noticing the late queen and current king being absent from their children's lives and reading their book, Spare. The newspapers have been full of TV interviews, the Nigerian trip and Queen Camilla's treatment. King Charles is getting tired of the whole affair, he can tell by watching what Joe Public thinks. Harry and his wife have shown him complete disrespect, a source says on William's behalf. This bigotry and deceit is seen by God firsthand, for the monarchist cause was always Christian. With the king and Princess Catherine battling cancer, Harry and Meghan trying to destroy everyone including murdering the royal family. Harry and his wife approach Judgment Day. While some are expressing regret and seeking atonement for their lies, others this week showed they are sticking by the monarchy. As God stands in defense of the monarchy, the beast, of old, will rise again and utterly annihilate their foes. Time is not too far for them to abandon and confess their crime. Hail to the future king and queen. Deliverance awaits. Harry will swear by it while Meghan lied. I felt a little sorry for Harry and I can't wait to watch them stand by each other through whatever yet comes their way. We all have been a victim of deceit, some for profit only, and those include the media should be locked up to see how much they like breadlines. I mean, let's say I am his parent, this is a necessary life lesson. If they leave, then perhaps their family will not support them as before and at best the abuser, if male, would still have precedence over others in competition. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.